Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is midday if you're in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well. Okay. I uh, hope you had a good weekend. Smokeberry Barbecue, Euro, Mr. Square Peg, hello to you all. Uh, yeah, I had to restart the stream a few times this morning. I keep, if you see the stream going up and down and up and down at the beginning, it's generally me stopping and starting the stream so that um, we get our transcoding to kick in because it doesn't always kick in with Twitch. Twitch being twitchy as usual. Uh, we got there in the end. It only took about six, six tries. Uh, but it's good to see you guys though and i hope you're all well yeah also if you hear thunder and lightning going on in the background it's because we're having a major thunderstorm where i live at the moment so my apologies if you hear, hear thunder in the background it's because it's been pouring with rain and having lightning and thunder and all that sort of stuff so can't control the weather i'm afraid mr squarepex there's no problem oh, cool so what are we doing we are working on the master bedroom or the house in the hollow game uh, Euro says can't hear it because of the wind in the middle of a storm at the moment. <laughs> it's actually not not thundering at the moment, but it was just before I started the stream, and we're supposed to get thunderstorms in Melbourne here throughout the rest of the afternoon, so you may hear some thunder. Hopefully, the power won't go out. <laughs> uh, generally, I'm pretty pretty lucky that way. We, um, other parts of Melbourne can lose power, but because where my apartment block is is near a, a shopping strip, they tend to not knock the power out here. So. Fingers crossed. If I go offline all of a sudden, you know the power's gone out. <laughs> so you're having a thunder. So you're having rain as well, Euro. Wow. Uh, yes, we. Uh, as, as always, I think I forgot to mention. If you do miss my stream when I'm live, you can always catch up by clicking the videos tab at the top of my Twitch page. Uh, I upload all of my previous streams to Twitch, so they'll always be there. Uh, you can always catch them on YouTube as well, but YouTube is behind my Twitch live streams because I'm an affiliate and I can't multi-stream at the same time and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so you can watch them on YouTube too, but they are a bit behind. Smurpery says we don't get interesting weather here anymore. <laughs> uh, in, the weather in Melbourne has been bizarre. It's been getting incredibly hot for incredibly long periods of time. Then we get these massive thunderstorms. We had hail about two or three weeks ago that was the size of a golf ball. It was huge. I've never seen hail that big in Melbourne. I was worried actually the windows might smash because of the hail hitting the window pane. And it was loud. It was so loud. You're lucky I wasn't streaming that day. You wouldn't have been able to hear me. It was so loud. So, yeah, no, weather in Melbourne is coming really bizarre. Really bizarre. It's global warming, I'm telling you. You know it's global warming. Um, Euro says rain, hail, gusts in excess of 50 miles per hour It's is winter. <laughs> well, see, we're in summer here at the moment, coming into autumn, thankfully, because I hate summer. Uh, Euro says, I think I saw that on the news. Yeah, actually, I think it was reported on the news in Melbourne. Golf ball, golf ball sized hail. And I was right in the middle of it. Uh, yeah, I was. I was afraid it was going to smash one of the windows because it was. And it lasted for like half an hour. It was unbelievable. Uh, a couple of, about four weeks before that, we had a rainstorm that had that dumped all of this red mud everywhere because apparently all of the bushfires have kicked up all of the soil, which went up into the atmosphere, which mixed with the rain clouds. The storm came over Melbourne and dumped all of this rain that had all of this mud in it. So the entire city was covered in like this reddish colored mud. It was disgusting i still haven't gotten out onto my balcony because i gotta clean it because it's just it's still covered in this red mud i've just been lazy <laughs> uh, but then the hail came and the hail knocked spots in the red mud so now my balcony looks like this it's covered in red with these little white dots everywhere i don't know what people would think if they saw it and they didn't know about the weather so yeah it looks quite bizarre it's a work of art that's why i haven't cleaned it that's my excuse um, Euro says all the dust here, yeah, we sometimes get red rain in Europe due to dust thrown up by the Sahara Desert. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Smokeberry says, uh huh. <laughs> you calling me a liar? <laughs> Want to fight about it? Uh, no, I must get out there and clean it. It looks disgusting. But I've been too busy. Come on. I'll do it eventually. No one sees it. Uh, and I don't go out on the balcony. So, 
I spend all my time in, in my little bubble and when I don't have to go into work in the city anyway. Uh, so yes, we are creating the house in the hollow master bedroom in the Unreal Engine 4. Um, if you do want to wishlist the game, you can do so now on Steam. Just click the graphic in my panels. You'll see a little graphic that says the house in the hollow wishlist. Click that, it'll take you to the Steam store page. But the game is not due for release till the end of the year. So you've got plenty of time. <laughs> um, so we've been working on the assets for the master bedroom. We, we have all of those done that I'm aware of. I don't think there's anything else we need to do for the master bedroom. I think that's pretty much done as far as major furniture pieces go. Um, I do have to create a lot of bits and pieces and odds and ends for things in drawers, but uh, we'll tackle that a bit later in the year. We'll get all the major rooms done first. So master bedroom today and maybe tomorrow, depending on how we go. Uh, after the master bedroom, I'm going to tackle the staircase to go up to the attic, but I'm not going to do the attic after I do that. So we'll do the master bedroom. We'll do the hidden, again, spoilers. If you do want to play the game, you probably should not be watching the stream because um, you will get spoilers. Uh, once we've done the master bedroom, we'll do the room behind the master bedroom. Smurfery says, when are you going to, to the cheese cellar? That'll be, uh, th this is the plan, the rough plan. Master bedroom. The small room behind the master bedroom. Then we're going to move on to the study. And after the study, we're probably going to do either the sitting room or the attic. And then after the attic, it will be the cellar. And that cellar then will be the last room, the last section we need to do for the building. And then we're going to move out into the forest to start creating a couple of areas out in the forest for players to explore. That's the plan. I could change my mind at any time. <laughs> I reserve the right to change my mind at any time. And I'll talk to the guys and see. What that, that's the rough plan I've got going at the moment, though. So, let us jump straight into Unreal. This is our building. This is our actual um, master bedroom, which is completely empty, as you can see. And now I've turned lighting off because if we put lighting on, there are no lights in the room and it's pitch black. And we can't work like this. So we'll work in unlit mode until we get some lights going. Uh, all of the assets have been imported. Uh, Ash Smurfbury posted a really interesting video last week showing using um, bump offset or parallax mapping with regards to uh, light fittings, like this light fitting we have here. Let me just open this up. Come on. Let me pull it onto the screen. Uh, this is actually a prefab. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've uh, set up the shader for the light fitting and I've also placed a uh, a point light inside so that we can easily place it. Euro says I've been doing lots of repetitive modeling today. 48 variations all knocked out. Well, well done. 48 variations. That's quite a few. Don't you love repetitive tasks? I remember when I was doing, when I used to do web development quite a lot. Um, there's a lot of repetition when you do web development, web design. <laughs> Mind numbing repetition. Necessary, but there, yeah, man. But well, well done, you're ready to go for 48 variations. Smurfery says, oh, that's certainly repetitive, it certainly is. Uh, Euro says, yep, certainly paid some soul points doing those. <laughs> well done, Euro. Necessary evil. Uh, now, the, the video that um, Smurfery posted last week was really interesting. You should check it out. Um, he was using bump offset and parallax mapping to make the uh, the light inside of the shade move depending on how the uh, how the viewer was moving. Now you see, I've got the same thing going on here. I did not use bump offset or parallax map. Um, the way he does it, the very valid way to do it, uh, and basically it was so that when you move around the object, it looks like the light is actually moving. Now his way of doing it would not have worked for a light fitting like this. He, he, used a, he used a faceted light, so it had like sides that all joined together in like a facet shape, like a you know, hexagon sort of thing. Uh, because this is a round light shape, it, it wouldn't have worked the same way, uh, but I've achieved the same effect by using a shader only, uh, by using a shader that doesn't use bump offset. It uses subsurface scattering. So you can get the same effect um, if you don't want to use parallax mapping or bump offset by using subsurface scattering. 
Smurfery says hacks. That's right, they're all hacks. You know game development's all full of hacks. That's all it is. It's all hacks. Uh, so yeah, so we get the same effect by using subsurface scattering here. I just wanted to point that out. Um, instead of just having the emissive built into the shade, in which case you would have had like a, a light color running all the way around the outside of the shade, which would look weird. Uh, we've done it by using our subsurface scattering. So. Smurfery says it's true. It is. Euro says uh, if I don't work, if I don't work program it, so it does. Well, that, that's the, you've got to do that in games development. I mean, the introduction of ray tracing in games now, and it just works by Nvidia. Um, it's not quite right. Ray tracing might just work as far as reflections and soft shadows and stuff go, but there's still a lot of hacks you've got to put into a game, I'm afraid. So <laughs> so while I applaud uh, it just works, uh, it doesn't just work. There are a lot of hacks you've got to do. And that's one of them there for the lampshade. We did, the, And I've done the same thing here for the, um, the sconces, which mimic the lampshade. Now this one I could have used the bump offset because this one is faceted like his example was. But I've done the same thing. I've just used uh, subsurface scattering in the shader to fake it. Well, it's not really faking it. That's actually what would happen. Because basically I have a light source inside of the, the lamp and the lamp shade is actually subsurface scattered. So it shows through. Okay. I just wanted to mention that. So to show you that there's an alternative to using bump offset, just use subsurface scattering. It might even be easier for you to set up. It's a, the shader is not as, um, computationally heavy as the bump offset parallax map that you saw in that video that he used. It's a little bit lighter, so it may be a bit more performant. Again, I haven't measured the two, so I can't say for sure, but it's a smaller shader, so. Euro says, real-time ray tracing is still in its infancy. I reckon probably two generations and it'll be decent mainstream for games. Yeah, look, the first generation ray trace graphics cards it's first generation. I mean, you don't buy into the first generation really of anything. Not if you're smart anyway. I mean, if you really must have the latest and greatest, then by all means, I mean, I, do it. Um, I, I'm, I'm running 2080s, but um, yeah, my, my advice is, as you, you Rose just said, maybe hold off. NVIDIA are due to release new graphics cards this year. Now, I don't know what they're going to be like. I don't know how much faster they're going to be or any of that sort of jazz. Um, so depending on how much perform or performance you get from the new generation, maybe jump on an RTX card if you've got an older graphics card if, and you want to upgrade. But I think a year is right. So the, the new cards will be the 30 series. I'd probably wait till the 40 series and by then you'll have a lot of games that have ray tracing in them and the performance of the actual hardware will be really good. Uh, the House on the Hollow... <laughs> will have ray tracing in it. Uh, yeah, that's, I can't really go into detail about that sort of thing because I've signed agreements not to talk about stuff, so. Um, but yeah, the, you will be able to turn ray tracing on in this game. So we are, we, are built, we are programming ray tracing into the engine, into the game, but you don't need an RTX card to play it because I'm supplementing ray tracing with screen space reflection and reflection captures, so. Unlike games like Control, where they they implemented ray tracing and they did a good job of doing putting ray tracing in the game, but uh, they nerfed it for people that didn't have RTX cards by removing a lot of the reflection captures. So if you if you, if you play the game without ray tracing turned on and you look at it like a reflective window, there's no reflection. Uh, that that was a choice I think the devs must have made. I don't know why, because you don't lose much performance using uh, reflection captures. I mean, you you lose a tiny bit, but not a lot. Not enough to remove them from the game anyway, so I don't know what their reasoning for doing that was. But I'm sure it's still a fun game to play even if you don't have an RTX card. Uh, not that I've played it, so. Euro says real-time ray yeah, yep. Uh, Euro says, yeah, needed APIs and drivers to mature for ray tracing. Yeah, well, that was the other thing. NVIDIA released the cards right when Microsoft had just introduced uh, ray tracing into Windows 10. Uh, and I know that I don't I don't even think that it was actually officially in the Unreal Engine when NVIDIA officially announced the RTX cards. It is now. 
Um, ray tracing is officially supported in Unreal 4. I have it switched on. It just, it's not switched on here that you see. I've actually turned it off. All the work I do on stream, because again, I can't really show my ray tracing stuff. Uh, so I actually have it turned off, but um, it's certainly fully functional in Unreal 4. It, it, performance wise though, you've still got to be careful about how you use it. That's all I'm going to say on the matter. But there are a lot of, lot of um, things you can turn on and off with ray tracing in Unreal at least. From shadows to reflections to global illumination to all that, all, all that sort of thing is... There are flags, commands that you can uh, enable and disable all of that separately, so which is good. Because that way you can tailor the effect to the game. Instead of saying, I'll just turn everything on and, and hope for the best, uh, you can sort of turn individual things on and off and you can limit the ray bounces, the number of rays, all that sort of stuff. So, so there will be a checkbox in the House on the Hollow in the main menu graphics options that you can turn on to turn ray tracing on. Uh, there's also we're also planning to have a checkbox that you can turn uh, global illumination on. So, um, Yuri says I heard Intel, AMD, Nvidia, and Microsoft are working together on ray tracing stuff. Well, I hope they do because they all really do need to work together. You don't want one company doing it one way, another company doing it another way, because then things don't get adopted very quickly by developers. If you're a games developer, you want to develop for as wide an audience as possible. You don't want to sort of create stuff that will only work on NVIDIA or only work on AMD. So if they all can get together and put their heads together and come up with like um, a standard, then that's that's a good thing in my book. And it'll get much more quick, quickly adopted by developers. So Mr. Squarepeg says, yep, Euro, it's true. I can verify. Uh, Euro says, one, one API for it. Yeah, one API would be nice. Mapbury says, yeah, it's a type of thing that needs integration at all levels to work best. Well, it does. You know, you saw that with the introduction of ray tracing. You, you need the operating system, the, the game engine, the graphics drivers. They all have to work in unison to get it to work properly. That's why it had a little bit of a rocky start, I think, as well, because, because it was new. It was part of the DirectX 12 API, which is, you know, new uh, from MS, Microsoft. All those things combined to make it uh, challenging at initially when it was first in released, first introduced. Um, but having said that, though, I do have to point out, if you do want to play a ray traced game, you must be running Windows 10 operating system. It won't work on Windows 8, 8.1 or Windows 7. You need DirectX 12 and DirectX 12 is only on Windows 10. So keep that in mind. <laughs> If you haven't upgraded to Windows 10 yet and you do want to play RTX games, you're going to have to upgrade to Windows 10. Simple as that. You're not going to get DirectX 12 otherwise. But yeah, so if they're all working together, I think that's a good thing. A very good thing. And there are a lot more games coming out now that do have ray tracing in them. And of course, the next generation of consoles are going to have uh, be, be ray trace enabled as well. So. That'll help pick up, um, help escalate the number of games that have that have, will have ray tracing in them. So, Hero says Vulcan gave DirectX a well. Vulcan's actually very good. Gave DirectX a huge wake up call too. Their API stack is glorious compared to DirectX. I've heard that. Now I haven't worked with Vulcan personally. I don't know at this stage. Well, I haven't spoken to the guys about it at the game studio whether we're going to actually support Vulkan out of the gate with this game. It certainly will support DirectX 11 if you're running Windows 7 or 8 um, with no ray tracing obviously uh, and it will support Windows 10 with DirectX 12 if, with ray tracing um, but I don't know what we're doing with Vulkan. It's the same with Linux and Mac OS. The game is going to be released initially for the Windows operating system only. Um, once that's out of the way, then we'll look at doing a Linux and a Mac version on Steam as well. But uh, that's for, for after game release. So we don't want to get ourselves bogged down with too many platforms initially because we want to make sure that um, when we do release, it's released running well for one platform, Windows. So Mr. Squarepeg says the PS5 allegedly had to cut features because of the cost of RAM. I actually read an article this morning. <laughs> Bump on Bloomberg, so take it with a grain of salt. Bloomberg's obviously not always correct or often not correct in their tech articles. Uh, but they said it costs $450 to make a PlayStation 5. 
that's that's cost. So if it costs for uh, Sony 450 bucks, God knows what they're going to have to retail it for. Because they want to make some money. Um, so I've heard Mr. Square Peg. Yes, the cost is, of everything is, is quite high on the PS5. Uh, Mr. Square Peg says, not sure if ray tracing is on the chopping block for the PS5. Mm. I think it would be a mistake for them to not have ray tracing in the PS5. But if they can't keep the costs down, then they may have to. Because, you know, we're all PC master race. At least I am. Um, mainly on my stream. And it's mainly kids and stuff that use consoles to play games. Not exclusively. I mean, I've got th- I've, two, I've, I've got an Xbox there and a, a 360. I, I haven't bought the new generation. Or the current generation. Because I game on the PC. But um, it's mainly kids. And kids won't spend $1,000 on a games console. I mean, I, the parents won't spend... Some kids, some parents might, but the um, majority will say no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And if you're going to spend a grand, buy yourself a PC. You can get a really cool, fast PC for a thousand bucks. You know, good graphics card, decent processor, particularly with AMD now, with their multi-core processors. I mean, if you're going to drop a grand, don't do it on a console, do it on a PC. Much more value out of a PC than a console. You can use it for a lot of different things, not just gaming. Now, you know, there might be a bit more work involved with installing drivers and things, but that's not a big deal these days either, really. You've got GeForce Experience. If you're an NVIDIA person, you can install your drivers that way. Um, I'm not sure about AMD. I'm pretty sure it's probably the same sort of deal. What do they call theirs? Adrenaline or something? So it's it's not, not, not like the bad old days where drivers used to cause people major issues. They don't anymore. Usually not. Um... Euro says, next Xbox and the PS5 are running on essentially the same hardware, so they should be cost comparable. Well, well that'll be interesting if it's costing 450 bucks to make the thing. Uh, Euro says, price difference will probably depend on how ex- ex- exotic they go with cooling. Hmm. Well, we'll see. They're due out at the end of the year, the new consoles, so I'm happy j- that they're coming out simply because it'll push graphics to the next level, which I'm all about the pretty graphics. Um... It'll push the graphics and it'll push ray tracing implementation in games much more as well, which will benefit all of us PC people. Unless you're Rockstar and you just do a bad port of your um, your console game to PC. Ooh. <laughs> I'm sure Rockstar will fix that up, but anyway. Mr. Squarepeg says Xbox should be releasing a lower-end Xbox. I've heard the rumor about that as well. Smurpery says, I remember I once had to copy specific DLL files from specific version of ATI's GPU drivers into my 3D program folder to make them work properly with certain features. I remember having to do that with, um, what was the game? Might have been, might have been GTA, the, the Grand Theft Auto games, like 4 and 5. I think I had to do that to enable, because I wanted reshade. I wanted to use reshade in GTA, and uh, I think I had to copy a DLL to do that as well. But that's not a big deal. There are, there are tutorials online explaining exactly how to do it. You copy and paste a file, it's easy. So if you're a console gamer, don't be afraid of the PC. It's not that hard. You don't have to make the PC yourself. You can buy one off the shelf if you want. But I suggest you make it because it's a lot of fun. Putting the bits and pieces together yourself. Just don't electrocute yourself. But that's, you know, generally. Don't, don't turn the power on, you'll be fine. Until everything's together. Uh, Smurfery says, thank God those days are over. Euro says, um, Final Fantasy VII Remake in, is PS... Yeah, that's... I hate those exclusive things. Is a uh, PlayStation exclusive release in two months such a waste if it's not coming to the PC first? Uh, look, let me get on my soapbox. I hate um, exclusive releases on any platform, whether... I don't care if it's the Xbox or PlayStation or... The PC is actually never like that, but... Exclusive is rubbish. It's crap. Sorry, don't do that. I mean, they do it because they go to a company like Sony or Microsoft and Microsoft shove money at them and say, make it exclusive to to our console for such a period of time. But look at The Last of Us. That was a PlayStation game that has never appeared on any other platform but PlayStation, which is a real shame because, I mean, I'd I'd love to play that game, but I'm not going to buy a PlayStation to do it. So I'm sorry, Naughty Dog. As much as I love the, ga- the look of the game and I love watching Let's Plays of it, I'm not going to buy a PlayStation just to play a game. Because so, that sucks. It's wrong and it sucks. 
Mercury says, uh, I even wrote a tutorial guide for that for other people who are having the same problem, mainly with Marmoset. Well, good for you, Smurfberry. Smurfberry says, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is coming to PC. Yes, and that's another good looking game as well. Uh, again, I've watched a playthrough of it. Let's play of it. Smurfberry says, I've been waiting for that one for so long, because it does. It looks, it looks really amazing, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Again, environment's beautifully done. Can't fault it. Uh, let's throw the floor in. Now the floor is around the wrong way, so let's uh, rotate it. Now you'll notice the floor does not go all the way along. Now I've done that on purpose. It is on purpose because uh, I want the floor behind the hidden bookcase to behind the bookcase door to be a different floor to this one, just to help denote that we're in a separate section of the room. I didn't need to, but I thought it was the best way to go. It'll, it'll look more visually interesting that way. So I'm just going to line this up. I'm just also just going to scale this in just a touch. I made it a little bit too wide. But again, as long as we don't go nuts with the scaling, uh, it's not going to be noticeable by the player. Maybe back a bit. I made it a bit too small. There we go. I just wanted to hit inside the walls. Okay, so that's basically where our bookcase will sit uh, at the back of the end of this floor section. All right, that's our floor in. Let's work on the ceiling. Now, I'm not supposed to leave this room. Um, again, because I don't want to spoil the game for people that, have, that want to play it, I'm supposed to stick it, stay, stick to the one room and we're not supposed to show spoilers for the rest of the stuff. So um, it's going to be a bit difficult though because there are pieces <laughs> I want to copy from over here and bring over here. So we are going to actually leave the room briefly, but I'm not going to go through the level and I'm going to stay in unlit mode. So just to keep the guys happy. Otherwise, uh, they'll yell at me when I get when I, when I when I get back into the studio. They'll say, "Why did you do that? You know, you're not supposed to do that." So to pacify them, Legmog, it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? How's the gym going? Legmog says, "Okay, everyone, put your blindfolds on until Phil tells us to take them off." That's right. <laughs> Hello to you too, Legmog. It's good to see you. Are you still doing the gym? You're still going at one in the morning? Did you just get back from the gym? Because uh, leg mugs in in the UK, I believe, and it's really early in the morning in the UK. So, but it's good to see you, buddy. I hope you're well. How's your love life going? Because leg mugs always having problems with their love life. I shouldn't say that. Not always. Not always. Uh, so yes, we are going to leave this room, and the guys will probably not be happy. But uh, I'll keep it in in unlit mode, so that should be lit, some consolation to them at least. <laughs> We're going to zoom, 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 zoom all the way through to here. And I'm going to start by copying the um, the ceiling panels. I always like to right click and duplicate, but you can hold the Alt key and move and that will copy as well. Stay pointed up. Stay pointed up. <laughs> uh, now I've just realised the the third one I don't want to be down here. I'm going to put. I'm going to cut that hole out. Actually, Legmog says since the start of the year I lost 13 pounds. Way to go! That's one pound off a of full stone, of which I realise the stone is only used in the UK. It is. Don't they? Do they use stones in the US? Uh, to measure body weight just to preempt the what's a stone confusion <laughs> 13 stone 13 pounds that's pretty that's pretty good actually like mom a pound how, what's that in kilos is a pound is a pound two and a half kilos or is it or is a pound one kilo i don't know anyway regardless 13 pounds is, is Good going, like well, really good going. But yeah, I don't know what stone is. 
we use kilograms in this country. But no, well done. To lose uh, 13 pounds since the start of the year because we're only halfway through February, so six weeks, that's that's pretty good. Hope you're not starving yourself. Um, Leg Monk says, I just Googled 13 pounds to kilos and it says it's 5.8 kilos. Well, there you go. He's lost 5.8 kilos in six weeks, which in my book is pretty good. Pretty damn good. That's like two kilo a week. That's pretty good. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, there we go. Euro says one pound is uh, nearly half a kilo, 0.45 of a kilogram. I got it the wrong way around. But that's, yeah, that's really good, Leg Monk. You should be proud of yourself. Looking all spelt. As the, obviously the belly's going down, which is good. You know, the part of my body that I found the hardest to lose the weight on was my um, my love handles, the muffin top, you know, around the sides of your body, just around the sides of your belly. Not so much my belly, but that muffin top around the sides. I found that really hard to get rid of. It took that such a long time. Now, uh, Yuri says one stone is 6.35 kilograms. And there you go. Let, let's split the difference and say that... Um, Oh, okay, one stone. Well, he's nearly nearly at a stone, which is good for you UK people. But, but, but I work in kilos, so still nearly six kilograms weight loss in six weeks is pretty good. Can't complain about that at all. Uh, I'm just going to scale these in because obviously this um, wall, so this, this bedroom is not quite as wide as the um, as the hall section on the other side of the building. So I'm just going to bring it in. Uh, Leg Mike says thanks. Uh, this the one big change, and it's so simple, is eating less. Yeah, every Sunday uh, I have breakfast with friends. In the past, it was always the large full English breakfast. Now a simple egg Benedict sorts me out. Well, that's a good tip, and that's very true. It's not so much starving yourself as just eating less when you do sit down to a meal. Uh, I notice a lot of people, and it's usually older people now, but they like to have a three course meal. They like they like to have a starter meal, like an entree, and then they'll have the main meal, and then they'll have dessert. That's too much, and people eat too often, that's the other thing as well. People are constantly snacking throughout the day, and that's another really bad, that's, that's one way to, to gain a lot of weight. So if you can restrict your meals and have less portion sizes during your meals, then regardless of whether you do a lot of exercise or not, you're going to lose weight. So they're my tips, at least that's what worked for me when I was losing all the weight. But well done, I think that's, you've done a good job there, Legmo. And obviously you must be feeling better as well because you're not carrying as much weight around. Because that was the other thing I noticed, because you guys know I used to be very, very, very fat. Um, like, very fat. Round. Um, I noticed when I lost the weight that I had a lot more energy than I ever did. And I wasn't out of breath as quickly and I didn't sweat as much and all, all the stuff that goes along with weight gain when you're carrying too much weight. So, Leg Mark says, it's like, good Lord, the humble meal sorts me out. Who knew? That's right. Who knew you could eat less and still feel good? Uh, Leg Mark says, also, I do the ultimate Leg Mark smoothie. Raw kale. Oh, kale's disgusting. Raw kale, banana, blueberries, aloe vera, flaxseed chai seed, shelled hemp, which that's interesting, wheatgrass and cacao. Oh no, kale is disgusting though. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> oh yuck. Everything else not too bad, but oh no, I can't come at the kale. Ooh, yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. But good for you. Sounds like a good way to, uh, to get all the nutrients you need in a smoothie. A smoothie is a great tool for losing weight, yep. That's why the Nutribullet and all that sort of stuff has been so popular. All the juice bars are really popular around around the place now as well. People wanting to lose weight, wanting to stay healthy. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... That's part of your Smurf braces. <laughs> well, there you go, Smurf. Are you an expert, Smurf <laughs> Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to re remove the last um, ceiling panel. 
The leg mug says yes. The banana and blueberries are ju- really just there to make it not taste so bad. But they're good for you, though, banana and, and blueberry. Uh, I see this smoothie more as a medicine, more than a tasty thing. And it's certainly not tasty with kale in it. Euro says, um, Brussels sprouts. Oh, God, no. What is wrong with you, Euro? Brussels sprouts in a drink? Oh, my God. I don't like Brussels sprouts as a vegetable to eat as a side dish, let alone put it in a drink. Yuck. Oh, yuck, yuck, yuck. Cauliflower is another thing I can't stand. Oh, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Ooh. Brussels sprouts, cauliflower. Ooh, yuck. Um, I'm going to remove this last piece here. Uh, now, <laughs> this is a problem, uh, not a problem, but it's an annoyance. I don't know if you guys can hear the music playing in the background. That's the music from the main menu. So to get it to stop, I'm just going to play the level and stop the level. It's just with the way we have the music set up for the main menu system at the moment. Euro says, I love sprouts. Not enough to have it in a milkshake, though. <laughs> yuck. Yuck. Ooh, yuck, 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 yuck. I'm just going to move this panel down because it, I want it to go down to the edge of the window. Well, you should all be nice and healthy then if you like your vegetables so much. Your Brussels sprouts and all the rest of it. Look, I like vegetables, but I, I can't eat cauliflower. I can't, well, I can't, I can, but I don't like it. I don't like cauliflower. I don't like Brussels sprouts. I don't like broccoli. But I don't like beetroot. But aside from that, pretty much anything else is okay. Snugger Echo, it's good to see you, buddy. Uh, Legmark says, my friend once did months of having smoothies similar to the smoothie I mentioned above, minus the fruit. It literally tasted like cold wet grass from the lawnmower. Disgusting, I, didn't, I can imagine. Good afternoon to you, though. Sniper Echo, <coughs> it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? It's because I never shut up. <coughs> oh, it's good to see you, Sniper. Beetroot is ace, Euro says. Oh, yuck. Yuck. As an Australian, I'd be stoned for saying I don't like beetroot because the traditional Australian hamburger, they put beetroot on. Not, not on my burger, they don't, but um, generally it's, it's, it's uh, beetroot on a hamburger and it's disgusting. Oh, yuck. Yes, Sniper Rico. <laughs> What am I being chastised for here, Sniper? Euro says, uh, in fact, I'm going to get some right now. Oh, yuck. You can, you're welcome to all of the beetroot you can eat, Euro. All for yourself. All the beetroot for Euro. Uh, Legmog says, beetroot is an absolute superfood. Uh, look, I'm not saying it's not good for you. Uh, full of nutrients like crazy. So, no, it is. It's very good for you. As most vegetables are. Most vegetables are very good for you, regardless of what it is. Um, I just don't, can't stand the taste or the texture. It's yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Spinach. That's the other thing I don't like, actually. Broccoli, cauliflower, spinach. Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> They're all very good for you, but yuck. Um, so, yeah, no beetroot for me. You're welcome to all the beetroot you can eat, Euro. Um, so, what, what I've done here is... I've removed this piece here because we're going to have a room hidden back here. And what I'm going to do for the room is I'm going to remove this section of the ceiling. So it'll just create a more interesting looking uh, room if we can see all the way up to the top of the actual building roof. So we'll sort of like see up into the attic and then there'll be a stairwell here that we can go up to to enter the attic here. So that's the plan. That's the plan, anyway. Legmog says, but Jess, still hitting the gym. Good good to hear. Uh, still look like a total ge- January boy. What is that? But hey, survive until February. Survive to February. Nothing wrong with looking like a newbie to gym. Um, you'd be over the soreness now, because I know when you first start going to a gym, if you haven't been for a while, or if you do any sort of exercise that works your muscles. 
you, you get your muscles get incredibly sore, but it only lasts for a few days to a week and then you, you're good to go again. So you're over all that soreness stage and you can get stuck straight into it. It's important to warm up though too. Make sure you do some exercises to, to warm yourself up before you start doing heavy weights or anything. But it's good to hear you're still going to the gym leg bob. The night bot is spamming my links as usual. So we have our uh, ceiling sections in. I'm going to jump back into the front of the building. Legmog says, January boy equals sweaty, unfit bloke with a beer gut who looks like he'd rather be anywhere else in the first week of January <laughs> and is then typically never seen again after that. Well, that's the other thing. A lot of people take out gym memberships and they pay like a year up front and, um, and never go to the gym. Why, I say, why? Why do that? If you're not sure you're going to stick at it, then um, don't pay up front. Pay month to month. That'll be my advice. Uh, okay, I'm just trying to work out, because this, this room is designed, even though it looks very similar to the other room, it's a little bit different. So I'm just trying to see... I may have to take these columns over as well, but we won't put at the moment. We'll just grab this section here. Leg Mug says, to be fair, I paid for the gym all of last year and only went like eight times. See, that's a waste of money. I, I, mean, uh, I know you think you do it and it'll motivate you to go because you paid the money for, for a year, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Most times, anyway. Smokeberry says, uh, take these colons over columns I said columns didn't I take these colons over what are you so snappery get your leg mog says so in the first three weeks of 2020 I've already surpassed 2019 well there you go <laughs> well done you're getting your money's worth now that's the important thing okay let's uh, again let's duplicate these and let's move them over. Now, uh, I was going to say I may. Um, oh no! 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 I see. Okay, I can't do this. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do it by hand. So I'm going to delete that. And the reason I can't do it is because I've created instances of a lot of the. Um, the objects in the building so if I select this you'll see that every piece of wrought iron that is the same mesh in the entire building has been turned into an instance a hardware instance again that helps to helps with performance in the game well what that does mean is I can't duplicate these pieces because it's going to duplicate every every metal piece in the entire building and that's not what I want so I'm going to have to do it by hand. Sniper Sniper says the leg mug, I can tell. Uh, Sniper says your typing is much faster. <laughs> That's right. Leg mug says yes, old lightning fingers leg mug. Sniper says all jokes aside, keep it. Uh, yeah, do keep at it because it's really good for you. Good to lose weight, good to get exercise, whether that's at the gym or jogging, which is what I used to do a lot of, or just walking. Walking is good exercise too. Uh, so yes, the wrought iron and the archways, I believe, at least these two, no, and down here as well. The, I'm going to have to do, redo them by hand, unfortunately. I got a bit carried away doing some optimization early on the level, uh, and, uh, and I've turned them into hardware instances, so... Legmark says, I will certainly try. No signs of getting fed up with it yet. Euro says, 3D modeling is sport, right? That's right. <laughs> You're moving the mouse around. That's, that's, a getting, that's exercise, isn't it? Playing a game, using a controller, that's exercise, isn't it? <laughs> Not quite, but anyway. Uh, so we're going to have to remake them, unfortunately, by hand. No big deal. Legmog says, on Saturday I spent two hours on the treadmill 
interchaining between jogging and fast walking, but most of the fast walking burned off 1,000 calories that day. You'd be surprised, it, not even just fast walking, walking walking, how many calories you can burn. Any, any and all exercise is good for you, regardless of um, what it is. So you don't have to work yourself to near death and, and exhaustion to get a good workout to lose weight. Just, just some casual walking. Just half an hour a day even, walking. Normal walking will, will be really good for you. Uh, we only have to make one though, then we can duplicate it for over here, so. Probably better we do it fresh so that uh, in case there are any changes we want to make to this room, we can do that. And uh, Legmark says a thousand calories at least according to the machine. Uh, some blisters on my heels after that one though. Oh, well, blisters mean you're doing it right. Or your shoes don't fit. One of the two. No, walking is very good though. Now, I, I, again, I'm just going to jump back over to the other side because I can't quite remember how I designed these. Okay, I do. I have this uh, piece at the top, which is not an instance, I don't believe. No, I think we're okay. Uh, the columns as well are not instances, no. So let's let's bring these over. Okay, again, you can see this room is much uh, smaller, not as wide as the other room. So. What I'm going to do is, so I'm just going to put that column over near the wall. And then we'll move this column in. Um, okay, we're going to have to rotate this column so it doesn't stick through the wall. Legmark says yes and Friday will be a date day. Okay Cupid turned up trumps. Well there you go. Good to see you putting yourself out there uh, Legmark. So let's move this in as far as we can before we hit through the other wall. Uh, again, you'll, you, you guys that watched me when I made this building know that uh, I did this sort of thing on purpose where we have gaps between walls so that we can start hiding things that we don't want to stick through to the next room. It's an easier way to do it. Uh, we did it a lot too for the plants outside so that they don't stick through walls like you see happening here. Uh, even even with the gap, this plant is still very close to the wall. So, uh, but we're gonna hide that when we come to do this interior room, so. Snappy says, which one? Donald or Ivanka? <laughs> and Ligman <Monk> says, Donald. <laughs> Snapper says, I haven't slept in a while, I apologise. I <laughs> uh, hope everything's going well, Sniper Echo, with your game. Sniper is making a game as well. We're all making games. Uh, and this game is Sni Sniper Echo's fault as well, because he was the one that convinced me to do it. So. Blame Sniper Echo.
Okay, we won't see the backs of these because there's panelling going to go here, which is where the bookcase will be, so... Fear not. Sniper says it's going pretty well, thanks. Uh, kind of got revealed a little earlier than expected, <laughs> but the response was really good. Well, that's the important thing, so long as the response was good. Nothing wrong with a bit of an early reveal. Um, the, the, the reason that the guys and I put the uh, the game up on Steam so early because it's not going to be released till the end of the year. Uh, just just for exposure, the more people that know about it, the sooner the better. Uh, and Steam actually recommend that as well. If you're selling on Steam, get your coming soon game Steam store page up as quickly as possible. Legmog says, "What's that's the sniper." <laughs> So now I just need to make sure that um, my columns are about where I want them. I think I might need to move them over a little bit. I don't want them intersecting the door like that. Let's go the other way so my... My... Um, Widget here is on the right side, it's easy for me to move. My axes. Call it what it is, well, it's not a widget. They're your axes. Sniper says, I uh, dropped a pre alpha sign up form and the response was really good, cool. Uh, we're not doing alpha. We're not doing early access, at least not at this stage. Uh, or, or public sign-ups for the game either. Again, at least not at this stage. Just trying to organise myself here. I'm trying to work out... Why my columns are looking so large? I think it's because the gap between this wall might be a bit bigger than the other one. Okay, what I'm going to probably need to do here then is I'm going to have to scale these. Again, this room is not as wide, that's the problem as well, I think. So if I scale these in, and we're, what, 1.26 on the X. Wrong way. This is the one I believe we want. Now we can move them in a little bit closer. Legmog says to Sniper, always seem to be doing different fascinating projects all the time. Games, dual camera video tracking, erosion simulations. Good God, man, when will you ever finally just work on something dull and boring? <laughs> Sniper says he's in Photoshop right now. Uh, Legmark says, excellent, you better be doing something really dull, like taking a non-tiling concrete texture and making it tile tileable. And now, now that we've uh, shrunk our column down a little bit, we can move it in closer to the wall. I can leave a bit of a gap because we're going to have wall panelling here anyway. But I do need to make sure it's not sticking through the other side. We're close, but not. We just made it. By the look of it, just, just made it. Oh, that's so close, but we're okay. Uh, let's move this one in as well.
That's better. This is too big though, so let's scale this one in. So it doesn't really matter, we had to remake it because uh, it's a different scale, so we would have had to remake it anyway. So it all worked out for the best in the end. Again, just need to make sure I'm not going through my wall. Sniper says about that about sums it up like what? Okay, now these ones. Again, I'm just going to double check. Looks like what I've done here is I've widened them a bit. So I'm going to do that here as well. So let's scale it this way. I'm just looking at how low they drop. I, and I, I, I sort of want to, um, I want to frame the bookcase in this. So I don't want these to go too low. That's why I'm not doing a uniform scale. I want to try and avoid having these pieces drop down too low on the side. And it's more in keeping with the other side as well. If it's scaled wider, slightly wider. Legmark says, Phil, I had an amazing idea for your game. It's so good you must scrap the current plan and go with this one. Tell me what this amazing idea is, Legmark. Come on. Tell me about this amazing idea. I'm just making sure it's actually in the middle of our beam at the top. I'm all ears. A leg mug says, you know Peter Molinix? Yes, legendary game designer. I do know him. I don't think he does games anymore, though. I think, wasn't it the Fable games and stuff? Didn't he do those on the Xbox? The actual Xbox 360? Uh, he made a smartphone game called The Cube. All you did was chip away at this cube. It was multiplayer, millions of people all chipping away at the cube. The first one who got to the center of the cube won the ultimate prize. Oh man. Uh, uh, what, you're gonna tell me it sold millions? Uh, Sniper says to Legmog, that's now called PUBG. <laughs> oh, Sniper Echo. Um, the game, that, that sounds incredibly boring. <laughs> I do know Mr. Molinix though. I have heard of him. I am familiar with him. Or Molyneux. I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. Alec Mug says, so this game can be kind of like that, but instead of find what's inside the cube, it's find the toilet. <laughs> Think of it. Millions of players all searching in the house and you can give give like a cash prize to whoever finds the toilet first. You know, Alec Mug, that there is a toilet in, we have a bathroom in this building now. I did the bathroom last month. So there is a bathroom. There is a gold toilet. <laughs> oh, you're such a smart ass. <sighs> well, moving right along and ignoring Legmog. Such a smart ass. Uh, but I believe it's these pieces that I'm using for the sides. I have to think back to when I made the originals, which was last year at the other side of the building, as to how I actually put it together. Legmog says, I have a feeling it will go on for months. Players swearing blind that there is no toilet, but the curiosity keeps bringing them back. Hours sank into exploring the house trying to find it. Oh, 
There's going to be an outhouse as well, of course, somewhere out in the forest. I'm going to put an outhouse out there. So there'll be two toilets to find. The, the gold toilet and the outhouse toilet. Can you find the toilet? And the outhouse will be there for all those times you just can't make it back to the main building to go to the bathroom. Although I told you guys, you, you just use the forest. That's what the forest is for. You know, you spoiled people that want toilets and things. I mean, what is this? Come on. You're all spoiled. Use leaves and go into the forest. Uh, Euro says cash prize. Surely they're, they're searching that badly for a toilet. Some toilet roll would be the real fitting reward. That sounds like a great idea. I think a toilet roll is the way to go as well. You want your reward for finding the toilet, you get a toilet roll. Okay, again, I'm just trying to work out exactly how these have been designed because I can't remember because it was so long ago. Uh, these are actually a lot bigger. I'm just realizing. Um, The actual wooden arches here are a lot bigger in this room than they are on the other side. I wonder if I should make them bigger on the other side. Or if I should just play with the design a little. Actually, I might play with the design. Because if I make them as big on this side as the other side, it's going to start uh, eating into the room too much. So we'll take some artistic license and make them a little different. Well, the sniper says to leg mug, that sounds like... We have what we've been doing this last four years with the kitchen. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I knew somebody would bring up the kitchen. Trust you, it's trusted to be you, Sniper Echo. Yes, there is no kitchen in the building, yet. Actually, I forgot about the kitchen when I was telling you guys at the beginning of the stream about my plan for which rooms are going to be worked on. Uh, I better make sure it's actually in the in the plan with the game studio. I'm, uh, the guys and I have spoken about it because I can't remember. Kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. There is no kitchen. There must be a kitchen. I, I know where the room is for the kitchen, but it, it's empty. But I don't know the design, so I'm going to leave the kitchen till the very end. <laughs> so you're not going to have a kitchen till quite quite a few months yet. Uh, Euro says even ships have poop decks. <laughs> uh, Euro. Leg mug says yes to Euro. It's called over the railings into the sea. Ooh. Marcus says, if nothing else, I'm reliable. Phil, you are. You almost got a Phil slap too. Consider yourself lucky. I didn't set all, I didn't give you a slap, but I was going to. You were this close to getting a Phil slap. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to scale this in a little bit. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Let's move you in. I just want to make sure the, the tops of it are hidden inside the wooden arch panel. Let's move you in a little bit. So yeah, design a little different, just not quite as wide as the other room because this room is not as big. Let's duplicate this one. Again, I like to right click and duplicate. It makes it easier for you guys watching me to see what I'm doing, but you can just hold the Alt key down and drag to make a copy. If you're not streaming and you don't have to show people what you're doing and how you're doing it. That's why I don't use a lot of shortcut keys when I work in any program because if somebody watching my stream and if I'm hitting shortcut keys, it makes it hard for you guys to follow along. So I always like to move my mouse around or do a right click and use a menu as opposed to using a shortcut key. When I'm working on my own, I use shortcut keys though. Sniper says there needs to be a, a can in the kitchen or at least adjacent to it. What's the can for? Euro says so you can kick the can. Sniper says oh I think we both know what it would be mutually assured destruction because <laughs> he can set them up as well as a mod of course he can slap me back 
Uh, and anyone that's a sub to my channel can slap me as well. Speaking of which, actually, I forgot to thank Tamana for the, what is it, 32 month subscription. Man, you are, I think, my first subscriber ever, Tamana. You, you were my first when I first started streaming. And uh, nearly three years. In, you know, in four more months, you'll be sub for three years. Man. So that means I've been streaming for like three years at least. Wow. Where does the time go? Doesn't feel like three years. But thank you, Tamana, for the subscription and for the continued subscription for 32 months. It really is appreciated. You are awesome. Thank you. Um, Sniper says, Jiro, sure, you can use the can because the toilet is nowhere. You know where the toilet Don't you say that. That's not true. You guys, you guys know there's a toilet in the building. There's a very nice bathroom in the building. There's even a bath. I don't, you don't have to go bathing in the pond out the front anymore. I've given you an actual bath and shower you can use. And you still complain. Uh, Smurfberry says three quarters of an eternity. Euro says safer going into the garden. Don't know where the can's been. <laughs> you don't know who's been using the can before you. Yeah, that's right. Legmog says, wow, just clicked on my own name, followed since February 2017. Oh, really? You've been following since 2017? Well, I've probably been following you that long as well because I think I followed you when you followed me. Wow, 17, 18, 19, we're into 20 now. Yes, yeah, it must be three years I've been streaming. Wow, it does not feel like that long. It really doesn't. It surprises me. Nearly three, well, at least three years I've been streaming. Well, there you go. All right, let's move. Look, we need the... Um, now, the other side has two of these metal pieces, but the other one of these archways is much bigger, so we can't fit two in this room, and I don't want to encringe on the room itself. So, this one was just slightly differently designed, which is a good thing because this is a different room. We don't... It's good to have it not look exactly the same. <sighs> Hero says, time flies when you're in the kitchen, except you haven't been in the kitchen because there isn't one. Oh, <laughs> Euro legs it. That's right. You, you're all you're all this close to a fill slap. So close. Actually, you're going to get a. What are you going to get? You're going to get a stink eye instead. That's for all of you. You're all getting the stink eye from me. Uh, Sniper says uh, this paid for the Bitcoin Second Life project in endless. <laughs> That's right. All that Bitcoin you've got going on in your in your Second Life. All the real estate you bought in Second Life using your Bitcoin cipher. <laughs> Let's pull this metal piece in because this is the piece that goes in between the archway. We'll get it lined up and then we'll do a scale. Scale it up a bit bigger so we can place it a little bit more easily. And it goes between those two pieces of wood there. Uh, now again, I'm just going to jump to the other side to check exactly how I designed these. And I'm lost. There we go. <laughs> uh, okay, it looks like they sort of fit to the top of there and they go through. The, okay. <gasps> I wasn't facing up. The guys at the studio are going to scream. When I went through the building, I was not facing the camera up. You got to see too much. Uh, so we want it to go to about there. And we want to drop it down so that that rests on there like that. And again, we want to make sure we're in the middle or around the middle. That looks good. Uh, again, I'm just going to double check. I always like to check. Okay. 
Okay. And where am I? There we go. I think what I might do here is just scale this down a little bit in one axis and the Z axis. That's better. Uh, Sniper says, good job nobody knows or has seen the source material and reason for this house. What do you mean? What are you, what are you saying, Sniper Echo? What are you implying? Sniper says it's not like it's your, on YouTube or anything. Well, that's true. <laughs> but it has changed since what you saw in the uh, cinematic. Uh, even, even on the game's Steam store page, you know the cinematic... Uh, the, the, there's, a, there's a game cinematic and there's a, a game story video and the game cinematic is taken from the cinematic I created initially and the building looks different from that. Not, not, not hugely different. But it looks different from the cinematic because I've added bits and pieces to to the building. But you're right. If you want to get a general idea, which is fair enough, because if people want to buy the game, they've got to see what what it is. Uh, and I, we will be releasing another gameplay video before the release of the game, which will have the latest. We'll, we'll we'll leave that until right towards the end before the game is due to be released, so that all of the visuals will be the same as what you see in that video. And it'll be more of a gameplay uh, video showing you object interaction and all that sort of stuff because uh, it does look different from the cinematic now i've added a, a lot more stained glass there are more other objects so yeah it's different sniper says i mean the original architectural visualization video you did yes i did a i did a uh, uh I, I did a cinematic using the engine here which is what this game is based on so i did a cinematic called the house in the hollow which um which won the NVIDIA Edge Award, which was very nice of NVIDIA and Epic Games. Um, and the game is based on this building, which is in that cinematic. But the building has changed. I, I, uh, there have been adjustments to the lighting in the building. There have been new assets that have been added to the building. Um, yeah, it's a, while, while, while the general design is the same, the interior looks a little different because of the changes we've made since that cinematic was created. Okay, now I have a couple of choices when it comes to the stained glass in this. I can either go with the blue, which is the same as the the building up the top here on the other side, the, the hallway on the other side, or if I can find where I put them. We've got a couple of different colours. I think there's a green. So there's a blue and a green. Yeah. I think there's a red as well. Uh, Sniper says, yeah, it's changed quite a lot when you think about it. It has. And you guys haven't seen it because I haven't been able to show it. Um, but particularly the exterior of the building as well, like the, um, the not, not the actual pathway so much, although that has changed. There's candles and things there now, which you can see in the screenshots on the Steam store page. Uh, but the actual yard of the house here, the manor house, that's changed quite a bit as well, which you haven't seen and it isn't in screenshots that I'm aware of on Steam so yeah it's changed a bit uh, because we're having to incorporate um, different sorts of puzzle type elements in the game so that, which means new assets that have to be interacted with all that sort of stuff it's changed you, you get an idea from the from the cinematic but it's changed but rest assured if you do thinking about buying the game we will be releasing a gameplay video just before the game is released, so you see exactly what you get. Uh, now I do, I do have these, this stained glass. But I just got to remember where I put it because it's been so long. I don't think it's under effects. No, the, the, these are the actual books and stuff. But the, that's the magus, the actual main book that um, that you will be searching for in the game. <laughs> And of course, you can't just find the book because the book's going to be locked away inside of this thing here, which is the 
box. So you got to learn it. You got to work out how to open the box before you can get to the book. And then once you do get to the book, you have to open the book up. So I told you there'd be spoilers. So don't watch the stream if you don't want spoilers. But I've got. I'm looking for the uh, wrought iron. Uh, sorry, not the wrought iron. I'm looking for the stained glass. I can't remember where I put it. I've got keys and stuff. Actually, this is the back door key. Come on, you can do it. So before you can even get into the building, you need to find this key. Uh, the, which unlocks the back door. You can get into the front door straight away in the game, but uh, you can't get into the back door. You can't get into the most of the building until you find that key. Where did I put the stained glass? I can't believe I can't find it. Right. It saved me looking through here. I'm, what I'm going to do is we're going to sneak around the building. Uh, again, I'm going to I'm in an unlit mode, so you don't get a good idea anyway. So we, we do have a couple of pieces of stained glass here. We've got this green. We've got this. Uh, this is like a deep bluey purple. And then we've got the light blue. So I'm just trying to work out what color we'll use for the other side of the, uh, for the bedroom, whether we'll go with the light blue, the the ready purple, or the green. What do you guys think? Uh, Sniper says, wait, I have to pay more Bitcoin even after I commission this project. <laughs> That's right, I want all the Bitcoin, all the Bitcoin. Uh, so we, what do you guys reckon? Should we go with the green? Should we go with the blue? Or should we go with the uh, purple and red? That's the green. That's the purple and the red. The design is the same. It's only the colors that's changing. Uh, and that's the blue. Snowberry says green. Do we have green consensus? Hey, baby to you, Hambone, as well. How are you? It's good to see you, Hambone. I hope you're well. Hambone says, wait, sorry, that was meant for my cam girl. <laughs> well, hey, baby to you. I don't mind saying hey, baby to you, Hambone. Sniper says green. Uh, okay, Smurberry and Sniper say green. I'm doing really well, Hambone. How are you? We're trying to decide on which stained glass colour for the main bedroom we're working on. We have this blue. Again, I've got uh, lit mode turned off, so it's unlit at the moment. But we've got the blue, we've got this red and purple, or we've got uh, the green. We're trying to decide on which stained glass to put in the bedroom. So far, everyone's gone green. What, what do you reckon, Hambone? Let's see what the green looks like. Uh, it'll depend, I guess, too, on how the building looks, how the bedroom looks once we get the furniture in. We do have blue lampshades, though. Hambone says blue. Yeah, I, I was thinking blue as well, simply because of the lampshades are blue. I mean, green and blue, they, they complement each other anyway, so that wouldn't be bad. Blue make, keeps it consistent with the other hallway, though, on the other side of the building. Or purple. <laughs> you know, I don't think the purple. I want to keep the purple to the middle of to the ballroom. Uh, the green is sort of like along the vestib around the vestibule here. I've got a bit of a headache. Sorry, guys. Um, let's go with blue. And if we decide we don't like the blue, it's just a question of swapping the material out. We can, we can check it once the room is actually put together and we can decide which color looks best. But for the moment, let's go with the blue. But we will check the other colours once we get the room set up to see which might look better. Now, I don't think these are um, instances. No? Good. <laughs> so we can uh, duplicate this and copy it over.
Uh, I will be making them instances before the game is released, once we've got everything set up. You just don't want to do it too often because you can't... There are a couple of restrictions when you turn something into an instance. Uh, it's difficult to move. You, you can't select one object out of them all. Well, you can. You've got to go through the list, but it's more of a pain to work with. So leave your instancing until the end. No, it's not a tumor hand bone. Instances are super efficient, they are. And I'm using them quite a bit inside of this building for a lot of different bits and pieces are being instanced. Because they are hardware instancing, super efficient, read into memory once, and then the GPU quickly puts it everywhere just from reading the mesh and the, and the uh, material once. So instancing, must use instancing in your games because it's really efficient, as Hambone says. And no, I don't have the tumor. Thank you very much, Hambo. <laughs> sure. uh, again, that's the, one of the reasons why these pieces are separate. They, it allows me to use them in more than one spot for different things. And then I can just instance them together instead of making it all one mesh. Uh, Hambone says, I'm impressed by your technical knowledge. Oh, thank you, Hambone. Well, I have been using the engine for a while. I remember I first started playing with the Unreal Engine when I bought the Unreal game. So how long ago did the Unreal game come out? Long time ago. I, I do love the, the engine. It's a great, um, a great game engine to use. I like the tools, the uh, artist tools that they set up. The Epic created for the engine, they did a really good job. And trust me, I've bitched about it before, I'll bitch about it again. Um, I've, I've used Gamebryo, which was the worst engine I've ever used in my life and does not exist anymore. That's how bad it was. The company went bankrupt. Uh, it was a terrible, terrible, terrible engine. And of course, that's what Bethesda based their games on. I don't know about the current ones, but the, the old ones were certainly using Gamebryo. So. Sniper says, cam girl message there again, the handbone. <laughs> handbone says, what? Handbone says she really knows how to work those devices. <laughs> uh. I've heard there are quite a few cam girls on Twitch. So I've been told. You know, girls that pretend to play games or just don't even try and pretend to play games anymore on Twitch. They just turn their camera on and show their cleavage. Uh, Handbone says, I'm trying out Unity just because it's a little easier to get the program, get into the programming side of things. That's okay, Handbone. Handbone's apologizing for not keeping the stream PG. Yes, we will keep it PG. Now, you've been, you've been pretty good. It's okay. You haven't been too bad. But yes, we do have a PG stream. I want to make sure I'm family friendly. Because I want to encourage, you know, everyone to do 3D. And uh, I don't want young'uns to think they can't watch the stream because we're swearing or anything like that, which we don't do. We keep it clean. Again, I'm just making sure that uh, glass is actually around about the middle of our wrought iron. I thought that was a problem. Making sure I'm not twisted as well. No, it's not twisted. That is super annoying. <laughs> uh, basically, what's happened is because we've had to scale this um, this piece of wrought iron down smaller than the other side, the uh, the wrought, the the 
stained glass is not the, the wrought iron is not wide enough to fit the stained glass properly. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to scale up the wrought iron here a little bit. There it is. So it's a bit wider. And that way we can fit our stained glass in the middle. Um, but do you really think that Unity programming is easier than Unreal? Like, Unreal blueprinting is godsend. I love blue, blueprints in Unreal. It makes scripting stuff so much easier. It really does. Looks like it might need to be made just a little bit wider still. Just a touch. Just the tip. No, I shouldn't say that. That's terrible. Now I'm being rude. Uh, sorry, I haven't been keeping up with chat. Uh, Hambone says, uh, have you tried Unity at all? Just curious as to how it compares to the art side of things. No, I haven't tried Unity. I mean, I've seen games made in Unity and they look very nice, very good. Just as good as Unreal, but I haven't actually tried the engine personally, no. But I've heard good things. Uh, Sniper says, do any of you guys see Unreal? Did any of you guys see Unreal are working on a blender to Unreal add-on? Just press a button and it sends meshes, animations, textures directly into Unreal. No, I didn't know about that. So uh, the uh, Epic guys are working on this blender to Unreal add-on. That'll be cool. There is a similar thing now. Uh, what do they call it? Data Smith, I think, or something. I can't remember exactly because I don't use it. But there is there is like a plugin you can use to send um, to send animations and meshes directly from Max say to Unreal. I think it's called Data Smith. Don't quote me, but I think. And it's free. Because uh, Epic Games bought it. Smurpery says, I saw that. Handbone says, that would be amazing. Sniper says, pretty awesome stuff. That is awesome, though. Handbone says, that's one of the reasons I'm not using UE4 right now. Handbone says, I can't stand blueprints. As soon as I want to do anything sort of complex, it's more of a hassle. You can go into the code as well. You can, you know, you don't have to work in blueprints. You can work directly in the C code. That's not an issue. You can do that on Unreal. You're not restricted to having to use blueprints. But blueprints, I, I love blueprints. I mean, unless you're doing something super complex, blueprints work quite well. You're working my last nerve. This wrought iron is really working my last nerve. I've got to get it just right. Let's undo that. I actually think the, um, I don't think it's completely straight. I think that's the problem. I think it's on an angle. I'm thinking, why is this not lining up properly? Uh, and I have a feeling that's the reason. We're not actually completely straight. That might work better for us.
don't think we're completely right yet either. I guess rotate it just a little more. Okay. That's better. Um, Handbone says the whole visual coding thing is just not for me. That's not that it's not PG. <laughs> Sniper says the Smokeberry, there are add ons already out there that does most of that stuff already. Sniper says if that's correct. <clears throat> okay, so we need another one of these. Um, I think that's as far as design for that archway goes, that's pretty much the same. Well, it's not the same, but it's uh, same enough that we can say it's okay and done, I think. Again, I'm in unlit mode here, so if you're looking at it thinking, why does the color look weird? It's because I don't have lighting turned on. Um, <clears throat> the other ones have another wrought iron piece that runs up here, but I don't want to restrict the restrict the room too much so we won't we won't do that we'll make a bit of a change from the design <clears throat> but we do need to <clears throat> just excuse me for two secs guys sorry about that it's gonna be a bit of a frog in my throat but we do need to copy another archway here So we can just duplicate what we've done now. Oh. Got to make sure I don't select the particle system by mistake. <laughs> that particle system. Okay, I think that's all the bits. So let's duplicate it. And once we get the design of the room done a bit more, once we have it a bit more fleshed out, then we can look at changing the color of the uh, of the stained glass to see if another color would look better. But it probably is better we wait till we got the rest of the furniture in. trying to work out again I'm just going to jump to the other side of the room so I can see oh, okay I have another piece that runs into the side there and that abuts up to the curtain all right so we want this piece to come over to the curtain Maybe just a little bit more. Okay. I deselected by mistake. Because we have another another piece that goes in here. Alright. Looking good. Let's do a quick save just to make sure that we don't lose any work. Okay, let us um, move on to the wall panelling, I think. So, actually, let me just um, make some adjustments to our ceiling pieces here. So this one needs to be a bit wider. One needs to be a little bit wider. Uh, again, our ceilings here, we are using parallax mapping. 
because it's really only two two triangles, two yeah, two tries. <clears throat> but we're faking it with parallax map, which you can you can't see when it's not lit, but when it's lit, you can you can tell. <clears throat> and we don't have one here, of course, because we're going to cut a hole in the roof. Alrighty, now we can move on to the wall paneling. Back into our bedroom. Now, what I want to do with the paneling, I've created two different types of panel. Uh, we have our st standard paneling here, which will go along the bottom. And then I have a paneling piece here, which will go above that. So just to create a bit more interest on the wall panel. So let's start by pulling these in. And then we can, whoops, and then we can work out um, scaling once we've got them lined up. You got to shoot off Sniper a bit early, no problem Sniper Echo, thanks for being here. I'll see you tomorrow. You have a good night Sniper. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line these two panels up and then we'll look at the scale. I just want to make sure that they're um, <coughs> touching each other. <coughs> okay, let's select both of these. And let's scale it up. Let me just get into a position where I can see everything while we do a scale. Needs to be a little bit bigger. Needs to be a little bit bigger. <clears throat> Again, it's really hard for me to get my camera in a position where I can see what I'm doing. And scale it up just a little bit more. It doesn't need a lot, just a bit.
Oh, just a bit more. <laughs> What do you want to bet I've scaled it up too much now? Oh, no, just a little bit more. Yeah, that should be good. Okay, now we're going to work out how many between the on this wall. And I'm thinking we're probably going to need. I think three would be too many, so I think two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it out wide, a little bit wider. We need to scale it in, and we could put three panel pieces here. Um, but I think two would probably be better. So if we scale this one in a little bit, am I, am I going the wrong way? Should I scale it out? Maybe. Yeah, I, mean, I need to scale it out a bigger, not narrower. Now we can duplicate these pieces. Okay, now we can select all four. Let's line these ones up. Maybe we need to come out a little bit bigger. I'm just going to pull back. <clears throat> so I can get an idea of an overall look uh, whether as to whether I want to go smaller or bigger or whether these panels are too large basically for the wall um, I don't think they are I think they'll probably be okay I think if we go with three panels along the wall as opposed to two, so if we make them more narrow, the wall might start to get a bit busy. Or would that look better? Decisions, decisions. No, let's, let's, let's do this little piece of wall here and then I'll make a decision there. Uh, I do have these pieces that are single pieces that should fit here okay. So we rotate that one 90 degrees. And we pull this one in and rotate it 90 degrees. And then we move them over on top of each other or next to each other. Uh, again, I've kept these all separate because it allows me to reuse bits and pieces. Like if I'd made that all one, I couldn't then put that, say, here. Whereas by making this separate, I can reuse it in spots like there. Uh, and again, we'll instance these panels towards the end of the project when, when everything has sort of been built and put together. We'll turn them into hardware instances. So, so 
so it makes no difference we're using multiple panels because it's all going to be instanced anyway. Uh, let me just work the scale here, which is... Uh, not the X, but the Y and the Z. Not the X, but the Y and the Z. Okay, now we can do the X. Let's move it back into the wall. Now I'm just checking, yeah, I think, I think if we put three panels along this wall as opposed to two, uh, these might start to narrow up a bit too much. We'll leave it at two for now, and it's the same sort of deal we're doing with the stained glass colour. Once we get some of the furniture in, then we'll decide if uh, if we need to add three instead of two, if we need to make them smaller on the weight or not. But looking at it like this, I'm going to say probably not. It should be okay. Um, let us... Let's work with some more of the panelling first. Because um, we have this little room here which is going to be hidden behind the bookcase. So let's duplicate these. And move them down. And we're going to have to scale them in a little bit because it's, it's going to be too wide probably for this wall. Yeah, I think it's just a bit too wide. Okay, now we should probably maybe be able to copy this one. Maybe, maybe not. I may have to make uh, separate panel pieces for the around the windows. We'll see how it goes.
scale this one in. I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder in the background starting up again. Okay, let's duplicate it again. And rotate it. Move it back into the wall. Move it over. Duplicate this for the other side. Might just scale this one in just a little bit. Again, if we avoid scaling too much, people won't notice. We're gonna, I'm going to need to create a piece for up there that I haven't got. Just a plain wooden piece probably. Uh, and we're going to put a border along here once I cut the roof out so we're not worried about the top here at the moment. Um, Let's duplicate this piece. Are we going for time? Oh, we're getting close to time. So we'll duplicate it. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Because these have been designed to be looked at from one side only. The other side is flat. Uh, whereas the front of them actually has modeling detail built into it. So. They're not just planes, flat planes. They actually do have some detailing modeled into them. Uh, but the backside doesn't. Again, just to save on polygons, because it's going to be going up against the wall, so it's never going to be seen. Let's duplicate it again. Move it to the other side. I'm not sure if there's a column there or not on the other. Yeah, let me just check that. Yeah, there's columns actually by the window. So, so there's going to be columns going in here. Uh, probably the same down here. So I probably don't need this paneling on the walls. Uh, we'll leave it there. And then we'll decide a little bit later whether we're going to put um, columns there or, or if we leave it as panelling. Because I'm not sure. Not sure what'll look better. We do want to be maybe a little bit different from the other side, but yeah, I still don't know. It'll either be columns or it'll be panelling, one of the two. Uh, but let's do a quick save. We got our building started. We've got a good good head start for tomorrow when we come back and we can start putting the rest of the furniture inside the building, inside the bedroom and setting the bedroom up. But I think we might leave it there for today, guys and girls. Um, I do want to thank you all though very much for hanging out with me and for watching. Uh, I will be back on again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. You guys and girls take care and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. See you guys.